Morning guys, well it's uh, what's today, the 22nd of December Thursday. and we're heading down to a place called Harrington to catch up with uh, short destinations. Spending two nights there and then we're going to make our way down to Geelong as we're on the uh, Spirit of Tasmania on Boxing Day, the 26th. And we're heading over to Tassie. We were going to Tassie for three months. We've had to cut that short to two months. Uh, we're coming back on the 27th of February. We had a bit of a bingle with the caravan reversing it in yesterday and I've put a hole in the side panel. So we need to be in Melbourne to get that repaired, but also we need to be back in Brisbane in March to take our truck to the Brisbane 4x4 show. So we're gonna be at the 4x4 show. So make um, sure if you're in town, come and see us at the 4x4 show. We'll be at the EC Off-Road stand. Yep. And we're gonna have a whole new um, wrap put on the car and yeah, it'll be on display with everything that's been done to it. So yeah, if you're in Brizzy, come on down. I think it goes from the 17th to the 20th of March. But uh, looking forward to meeting some of you and um, yeah, having a bit of a yak. But yeah, come on down. Tight squeeze on our gate. You can see why we did some damage. And we don't have much turning room when we get out of our driveway. We did it again. Or should I say Dave did it again. Obviously we're not checking each other's work and this little mishap happened again. Got to the end of our street, same spot as last time, and the caravan fell off the hitch. Obviously no safety pin in place. Learn by our mistakes, please. I'm just glad this didn't happen down the highway and it happened here. So now we've got to undo everything. We've undone, undone the stone stomper, disconnecting everything from the car. And we've got to jack the caravan up and get it back on the hitch with a safety pin. So is that the thing that didn't have the pin? Yeah, see this? Yeah. I put the pin through the wrong hole. So you have a look, the pin is actually in there, but I obviously had the uh, zero, D045 sitting in here. So I know that I put the pin in last night, obviously I was a bit tired, been up since 5 o'clock yesterday morning, and look at the mistake I've made. And that just proves that we need to go around and check each other's work, both inside and outside the van. So now the pin is going into the bottom one. Pins in through the bottom one, and it's now fully secure. So just little basic things like this, guys, you need to check because things do happen. I mean, they are accidents, but they do happen, and it could have been a catastrophe going down the highway. Thank God I wasn't driving, that's all I can say. So if you look up the road there, that car up on the hill, that's our house. So we've only not even come a couple of hundred metres and this has happened. Good start to our trip, hey? Okay, just go forward a little bit 
Can I grab the chocolates? Jeez, you think we would have learned by our mistakes the first time that happened, but... It wouldn't be an adventure without problems. Oh. Our very first day within 15 minutes, not even 15 minutes of leaving home. What do you mean? It was only 150 metres. I know, I know. But let's, yeah, like I said before, I thank God it didn't happen on the highway because it would have probably wrecked the hitch and dragged along the ground and... Yeah. It just goes to show, don't do stuff when you're tired. And always check your work. I, and even, even next morning after being in a park, uh, let's just check our stuff to see if anything's changed or moved or some dickhead's been out there and, you know, played around with your caravan in the middle of the night while you were asleep. But anyway. I'm sweating like a one-legged man in an ass kicking contest. Anyway, let's head to Tassie. We'll take you along for the ride. Catch us later. Hey guys, well after all our drama this morning, we've finally just crossed the border into New South Wales. Had a little bit of um, bit of traffic. It's only 9.30 now. Had a little bit of traffic coming um, down that M1, but it seems to be flowing quite nicely now. Coming into Coffs Harbour. What's big in Coffs Harbour? Roz? The big banana. The big banana. Morning guys. Morning. We uh, woke up in Harrington this morning. Bit of a shower last night. Seems everywhere we go, we always bring the rain with us. Yeah. Um, this morning we've uh, caught up with Matt and Cheryl Lee from Short Destinations and we're uh, they're taking us up to show us a place called er uh, Ellen, Ellenborough, Ellenborough Falls. Ellenborough Falls. Apparently it's about an hour from Harrington and uh, it's a pretty nice waterfall. Apparently there's a fair bit to see and do around Harrington. It's uh, on the ocean and Harrington, it's just past uh, Kemp's, no, just past Port Macquarie um, and it's just above Taree. I think it's about 30 minutes to Taree and it's only 10 minutes off the main highway. So guys, we're about 10 kilometers to the turn up to Ellenborough Falls, 13 kilometers in total. And this is just a look at the road that we're on, heading up there. Bit bumpy, a few potholes here and there. Very windy. Warning signs, gravel and slippery, and it's, it's um, quite narrow as well. We're following uh, short destinations. So the road's gotten a little bit thinner or narrower. And it's all dirt and bumpy. And not recommended for caravans. Definitely not recommended for car caravans or semi trailers, as the sign says. Three and a half kilometres to go. So, guys, we're at Ellenborough Falls. It is raining. Let's go and have a look at the waterfall. <laughs> Head of Falls, 80 metres. Right, we'll go and have a look at the viewing platform. Impressive. Get a 700 meter walk on a fairly steep steps. So uh, if you're not real fit and healthy, take your time or don't walk down here. Today's very wet and very slippery. I think Roz and that must have gone to the high road, I've gone to the low road. That's a nice little waterfall. Not ready for me. Anything to say? Recommendations for the uh, older generation? It's absolutely breathtaking. 
but I'm absolutely breathless. I took her breath away like I do every night. <laughs> and we're still not back up at the car park yet. Ooh. But we're at the top of the stairs. Now it's just dirt track for the rest of the way. It's only a couple hundred metres to go. Let's do it. Let's get a power on. We'll see you at the top. Uh, you got a leak on your tail. I hope you enjoyed our little trip out to Ellenborough Falls. It was a long walk down to the falls. 700 metres apparently. 700 metres but it's very steep steps, wooden stairs all the way down, slippery is because it's been raining lately. What do you think Dave? Oh I thought it was breathtaking. It took my <laughs> breath. It took my breath too. But yeah, it was, a, it was a great little day trip. Like you could, on a on a good day, you could take your your lunch out there, sit down, and have a bar. They had a barbecue out there, um, some picnic tables. Just go out and make a day of it. Yeah, real, really good. Anyway, we'll um, catch us later. Stones, oysters, and fresh seafood. Let's check it out. Very popular down here, apparently. Stones, oysters. Fresh Smell the fresh seafood. Oh, what a cool little place. potato scallops and prawn cutlets. We also bought some corn jacks and some fish cakes and Dave bought a bottle of pickled onions. Morning guys. Morning. We've just spent uh, two nights in Harrington. At yeah. the Big Four, yeah, Big Four Colonial Harrington Caravan Park. Nice little park, big sites, um, great amenities, very clean. Uh, all the bathrooms are individual toilet and shower, hand basin in the bathroom. There's like 12 or 13 of them. Brand new swimming pool and spa. Awesome camp kitchen. Uh, there's just some really good facilities there. And the lady at the front desk, I'm sorry I forgot your name, but very, very personalised service. She, when we first arrived, she came out with our key and our paperwork and when we were leaving, we left at 8 o'clock this morning, she came out to meet us and she collected our swipe cards. Save us getting out of the car. Yeah, it was amazing. But anyway, we're uh, heading south. We don't know where we're going to stop. We think we might go to the place where there's a track winding back to an old-fashioned shack along the road to Gundagai. So yeah, we think we might go to Gundagai. <laughs> it's about seven hours, but we'll just see how we're travelling and how the traffic is and what's doing. But it'll just be like a free camp tonight on the side of the road somewhere or some rest area. I have punched in um, Gundagai North rest area. I'm not sure, I haven't looked at it yet to see if it if you can stay overnight, but I'll do that a couple of hours down the track. Gundagai is known for you that don't know, for the dog that sat on the tucker box. Now there's many stories about this dog and they say that its owner passed away and um, the dog sat there and was waiting for the owner to come to life and uh, would not let anybody go near the body. Um, that's just my recollection, I think, is what the, used to be on the signs there. 
we'll probably stop there anyway because it is a rest area it's now off the highway it used to be on the main highway it's now off the highway a little bit but uh yeah we'll go through and give you a little bit of a look around at the uh, statue of the dog on the tucker box and i just want to give a shout out also to matt and shirley from short destinations um for spending the last two nights with us we went out for dinner with them last night down to the local harrington hotel we also went for a drive up to Ellenborough Falls, which was amazing, but it was great catching up with you guys. So thanks again. Enjoy your chockies. Dog in the tucker box. Welcome to Gundagai, everybody. And here's the little dog on the tucker box. A tribute to our pioneers. Bill the Bullocky and the Dog on the Tucker Box. The Dog on the Tucker Box Memorial is supposedly based on the incident that occurred to a teamster named Bill the Bullocky on a road to Gundagai in the 1850s while leading his bullock team and wagon across a creek five or nine miles from Gundagai. Bill's wagon became hopelessly bogged in a creek trying to drag the wagon out of the bog, one of his bullocks then broke the wagon's yoke. Thereupon, Bill gave up the job and went to have his lunch. But here, to top off his run of bad luck, he found his dog sitting, or worse, on his tucker box. The other bullockies thought the incident a great joke, and one of them supposedly wrote a poem about it. In several versions, the poem spread the story of Bill's bad luck far and wide. There you have it. This is a visitor centre. Okay guys, we're in Holbrook and we've stopped off at the local park here to see HMS Otway. Adopted home of the Australian Submarine Squadron. A little bit of a park here, there's a takeaway shop. It is Christmas Eve, so there's nothing really open at the moment. We're heading down to stay behind the Riverina Hotel for the night. And there's also a dump point over behind our caravan here. So if you are in the area, there's a dump point next to the information center. Morning guys. We are now in Victoria. It is Christmas Day and we hope you have the most amazing day with your family and friends. Anyway, we're heading to Geelong uh, for the night and then tomorrow we are on the Spirit of Tasmania. Last night we stayed at the Riverina Hotel in Holbrook. Uh, it's a great little stopover for a night or two. Uh, big, big pub feeds. Uh, there was a muso there called Big Pups. He's from North Queensland. He was pretty cool. Hey guys. Um, oh, it's 20 to 4 on Boxing Day. We're just going to go and give the uh, truck a little bit of a hose down, give it a bit of a, a wash, got a bit of dirt on it. And then we're going to make our way to the Spirit of Tasmania um, port here in Geelong. Hey guys, it's that time again. Joke time with Dave. Hey Roz. Yeah Dave. What do you call security guards outside a Samsung shop? Don't know. Guardians of the Galaxy. Catch us. <laughs> 